nothing extraordinary on fuel to report really for the month of March. For, we had a little bit more of a normal month for March. Um, just a couple of expenses to highlight on the revenue expense report. Um, we did exceed revenues uh, slightly just by about $1,300 uh, expenses over revenues. A couple of items, unusual items that we had for expenses, we did uh, the roof repairs for Building 79, um, that was about $60,000. And then we purchased just over $30,000 for security cameras, these were both um, approved expenditures by the board. The expenses were incurred in the month of March, so a couple of extraordinary items there. And as far as the AR report, um, Carrie's team has done a phenomenal job cleaning up accounts receivable over the past year. We have uh, a couple of updates to the report that you have here. Um, uh, the Kern County Waste Management has paid, so that $7,800 that you see on your report is no longer outstanding. And then REM Industries paid an additional $2,500, so we collected uh, roughly $10,000 from them. Uh, since the last board meeting, since it was reported. Um, and then a couple of them that were working to uh, actually start the legal process. Um, the Vicar Sikora, uh, which we expect to have a better update within about 60 days on, on uh, this lease. And then the air and space, um, we're not getting any communication from them, so we think they moved out, they just didn't give us any notification. But overall, I think we have a pretty good story on accounts receivable. Mr. Sikora, we're up to 29000 Is that right? Correct. Is that a hangar or what is it? It's a building. Um, it's this building right here. It's a two, small two story building. Um, this, the, the lease holder actually passed away several years ago, and in our customer audit, this, this particular account came up. Um, there's a gentleman who's been trying to get the, the property cleaned up and uh, in hopes to come back to us for a new lease. And he's been paying the monthly all along, um, but we've just kind of determined that it's not something that he's consistently paying on time, so we just need to start the termination process. And Al, can I comment? Uh, I would have probably been much more aggressive at an eviction process had there been a different circumstance, had this building been a building that we could have refurbed and leased. But this is a legacy lease, uh, the, the, the tenant deceased that died, that having it go through the family uh, process and, and uh, what do they call that? Uh, uh, probate. I wanted it done properly. I've worked with the, the fellow that's, that's cleaning it up it's going to solve itself, but when it's done, I'm going to ask the board to rent a bulldozer, and we're going to have a clean piece of dirt. But uh, it's all part of the process. If it were a showcase building, we might have been a little more aggressive, but in this particular case, there was a lot of product out there that uh, had value. We just wanted it cleaned up properly and let's get this done in a responsible way. <coughs> trying to punish anybody because of the death. They, were, they had a business where the, the owner was acquiring uh, parts, pieces, and uh, remnants of uh, British Leland vehicles from the 60s and 70s. And so he was purchasing uh, new parts of fenders, bumpers, consumables uh, that body shops would have purchased to repair MGs, TRs, uh, 3s, 4s, uh, 6s, and then all these hulks of partial bodies. So to the right person, it was a, there's some value in there. To another person, it looked like a bunch of junk steel. And then the, inside the building were all these consumables that went along with that business. Uh, anyway, that's probably more data than you wanted to know, but I just wanted to know we're, we're not slow rolling this. We want to get it done properly. Then when it's all done, we're going to get that building cleaned up. As a former MGTD owner, I'd like to have seen that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> a few people have. Yeah. yeah. Don Stoll is one of them. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. I was going to ask Bill if he had that MG before or after the war. <laughs> Which one? Which work? I had the A model. <laughs>
Yeah. It's a fun car. All right. So, any other questions before we ask for a motion? This item is CEO report action items. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in the last board meeting, you and Mr. Evans uh, were having a discussion about the board's ability to take action on report items from the CEO. And the question came up, have we ever taken action on a report item? And uh, Debbie in her uh, search found, actually found one that occurred... Well, 2013. 2013, and uh, I'm sorry I was out of the country last week. I can't, I guess I'm suffering from jet lag. I can't remember what the subject was, but I, like, we could only find one in the history of the last 13 years where that's actually occurred. And so... I believe your recommendation, and it's your chair, is we won't take action on anything that occurs in a CEO report, only in the business items as listed. Is that correct? I, I don't know that that was an action item, but I, we, uh, <coughs> Scott did issue a letter with that recommendation. Okay. okay. As, the, as a standard operating procedure. Yeah, this was just put on the agenda, so yeah. the GM would have an opportunity to report to it. <laughs> uh, that was actually about a board of directors. I think we're fine. You have, so you have no report action items? No, sir. Okay. Um, then we have a resolution for the county's multi-hazard mitigation plan. Can you please... Uh, I'm going to ask... Uh, Curtin County comes up with its multi-hazard mitigation plan in order to qualify for FEMA and OES funds in the event of a natural disaster or other type of disaster. Uh, and the district participates in uh, planning for that and you are one of the members of the public agencies that uh, would qualify for FEMA and OES funds as a participant in this county plan. Uh, you approved this last 2013. The county has updated the plan and asked you to approve the updated plan. Uh, originally we used the last resolution adopted by the board to approve the plan. The county came back and said, we'd like to add these additional clauses, which are the ones highlighted in yellow. You'll see that they are, except for section 2.1, they're all just recitals concerning the development of the plan. And so we are asking that the board adopt this resolution approving this hazardous mitigation plan. And that, Mr. Chair, if you want any back story on what that actually means to me, I'd be happy to just give you the 30-second version. Sure, 30-second version. All right. Uh, we have uh, an agreement with uh, OES, Office of Emergency Services in Sacramento, through the Kern County Fire Department for excess equipment. That is actually staged on this side of the county for the county to have a surplus of equipment to be used during a natural disaster emergency. That's the equipment we receive from the county. It's all part of that plan. So if a natural disaster were to occur, earthquake, fire, you name it, the county has equipment on this side in the event that the pass was closed, they can take advantage of the equipment on our property and use it during natural disasters. Repair water lines, power lines, whatever. That's how we are involved. Man lifts, all this stuff, bucket trucks. Uh, what about personnel? It, absolutely. We, have, we can dispatch our own personnel to the county for direction for certain periods of time and, and then OES allocates the funds down to the county and the county would reimburse us for that at time. So those are all part of the agreements. I think it's a good plan. We get the benefit of having some surplus equipment on hand to use day to day, but in the time of a natural disaster, it can be used by other agencies. My only concern is Section 2.1. It says uh, we find the facts above to be true. I'm not sure everything above is a fact. There's some opinions in there. Demonstrates, legitimizes. I do not disagree with you. So is that, is it, is that their wording? Does that is their wording. So we're, we're asked to approve somebody else's word. This, this stuff drives me nuts. <laughs> I find this it so distasteful. It, it, it just, <clears throat> to be fair to the county, this is probably the same resolution that every other county approves in order to qualify for the OES funding. Why did they just approve it for us? <laughs> Why do they waste our time? 
Well, they're not wasting because our time. Because you don't have to equipment. participate. We don't have to participate. You don't. Oh, okay. And and but can we, we change we, this resolution? And can we say instead of the board finds the facts mentioned below, but the board finds the statements mentioned below, the basic truth? I don't know. I just motion to approve. Second. Sick to my stomach, but I pass this four to one. Okay. Uh, my name is Elliot Sigwin. I have a little race team here on the uh, Mojave Airport, and I work at Seattle Composites as a project engineer, flight test engineer. <coughs> um, a couple years ago, we started a little event uh, as a recruiting tool for scale and for the airport, and it's sort of grown into this Mojave experimental flying, which was last week. Um, the board helped us out with uh, some sponsorship dollars and uh, ended up uh, making a pretty awesome event. So the uh, the big thing here was uh, from a national or international presence uh, was the record setting. There is no other event like this on the planet where people can go and pool their resources to, with other record setters to save on the cost of setting a record and then take advantage of Mojave's fantastic airspace and you know, desert terrain uh, for record setting. So we had actually 11 record attempts uh, last week, which is more than we had last year. Uh, we had uh, seven records broken, six of which resulted in new records. So one was not quite beaten by enough to represent a new record. So that was awesome. The community event that happened on Friday night, we had uh, uh, 200 chuck lighters that were built custom by local companies with donated balsa wood from TNR Hobbies and Brubaker models, cut them up into Attachby. And these kids were running around throwing models. We had a, uh, a distance competition where those were handed out and our trophies were awarded from uh, AMA, the uh, American. Academy of Model uh, Aeronautics yeah. uh, uh, donated prizes for that. Then we had a rubber band airplane competition where 70 rubber band airplanes were built and flown around in there. We had uh, you know world class modelers that came come up from the uh, the basin from the basin, um, and we're standing next to some kid with chocolate cupcake all over his face, and they're both having a good old time winding up rubber bands and having a great time. So that was a fantastic <coughs> event from like a community standpoint. I was really proud of how well that went. In my opinion, that was the most fun part of the week. Uh, Saturday was the fly-in. Uh, we did about as well as we have in the past. In my opinion, from an uh, airplane geek standpoint, there was a fantastic selection of airplanes. Uh, a lot of really weird stuff on the ramp. Um, but from uh, from overall standpoint, you know, a lot of people showed up. People were excited about Mojave. People understood what Mojave was doing. And then Saturday night, Melville gave a talk, and we uh, handed out awards to some of the best experiments that have happened or, or experimenters that have done cool stuff with airplanes in the last year. Uh, that's continued to get national recognition um, as, as a place where people can come and see awesome stuff be done with airplanes, which is cool. I appreciate the, the board recognizing the value of that. Sort of a new model that emerged this year is the records that were set, all six of the records that were set were set by small aviation companies that use this as a feather in their cap for their 2015 year. So it's sort of a change. The year before, it was an individual who was doing this as a hobby, sort of a, a, a wealthy person with more time on his hands than most. This year was a small business that was using this to, to display a new product. So we had Aerochia, which is a company based in Santa Paula, and then uh, Lightspeed Engineering, which is another co company based in Santa Paula, set up this model where they come here and they bring their new hardware and they use the media presence that the airport commands and that the event commands to show off what they're doing. As a result, Lancer that was here on the airport for the event is talking about doing the same thing next year. It sort of brings up this cool new model for the event where you come to Mojave, maybe spend a couple weeks doing some build-up testing, and then you set a record that reinforces your bottom line. Whatever that tagline is on your brochure for this year can be reinforced with a record or, or something that you do here that takes advantage of Mojave's fantastic airspace and airport facilities. So uh, it's exciting. I appreciate the uh, board continuing to support the event. Yeah, if there's anything that I can do uh, going forward to make sure that it, it uh, reinforces what you guys want, let me know. About how many planes came to the plane? Uh, it looks like uh, between 100 and 150. Uh, Elliot, your relationship with the FISDO is paying you dividends. I don't think you recognize Sean was here right, in, in right. the tower, and I've already had feedback. Uh, it was fantastic, and, uh, and, and it's, I think it's the airport's relationship with the FISDO that really paid off. I mean, the flower bombing that went on, I've never seen um, 
I've never seen the FAA be seen in such a fantastic light. And I think that I could see this event being a model that other airports can use for how to read, how to work with the FAA to have the FAA allow you to do the freaking awesome thing that you want to do rather than having to hide it down in the weeds and then now in the day of cell phones, everybody finds out anyway and then you got to worry whose end number's on the side of the airplane, who's flying it that day, and who's going to be in trouble. So it's a fantastic model for, uh, for modern aerospace and I'm excited that, that you suggested that we work with the FAA. You FAA's have earned yourself a new set of phones now. <laughs> is, 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 of course, is the FAA going to make us pass a resolution as a type of flower? <laughs> 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 you got lucky though. I was worried about you on Tuesday, but Wednesday and Thursday, you got some good Maybe it's Thursday. Yeah, the, uh, the, rec the time to climb on Tuesday was fantastic. It was the best start I had all week. So typically we do about 35 seconds for that first thousand feet to, to the time to climb. We did it in 18 seconds because the wind gets you airborne so much faster. But then the motor started smoking and the uh, owner asked me to report. But the time to climb we set on Friday is the fastest piston power time to climb to 10,000 feet in the book. Um, and that raises the, the six records we set raise the total record set at Mojave from 22 to 28 records, which are all uh, documented on the web. So I, I think it, it reinforces some really cool stuff. It doesn't just have a record setting. Obviously, I get a little wound up about that. But I think it reinforces that sort of do cool stuff with airplanes and do it in the middle of the desert. And why not do it here in Mojave? No eyes were lost or anything with the rubber band airplane. <laughs> as far as I know. <laughs> Are you racing this year in Reno? Uh, I, I plan to, yes. Right now we're working out. We uh, popped our motor last year, um, so working out how that's going to go. Actually, right now, uh, it's just us talking. I'm really focused on getting Ralph's airplane to Reno. Ralph Weiss built that totally awesome airplane that's down there, and I want to get a picture of it on the pylon uh, doing what it was designed to do. So that's actually sort of a distraction from the Wasabi thing. but. I think it's another story. Right now, we're in Sport App this month uh, for the nonstop to Oshkosh flight. So that's two major articles and major magazines just on that silly little thing. A bunch of guys from Mojave flying Oshkosh. Um, so there's lots of great stuff going on. I think it's great buzz, and I think it reinforces the bottom line. So. You know, just uh, last week I was in uh, Northern Europe, and two articles hit. The one that, that, uh, from the European airports did their article on the Mojave. It broke. Saturday before I got in town on Sunday, and there was a write-up on your experimental aircraft flying that hit the web, and the ambassador's office had that printed out in the lobby in Stockholm. And I, I'm telling you, Elliot, you're making a difference, and it's always individual efforts that you don't you don't necessarily realize at the time how much farther your reach goes beyond your grasp. But uh, what you stand for is a big deal. And uh, the youngsters you're impacting now and the people you motivate on the flight line, I, I tip my hat to you, buddy. And you're doing it right. You're doing it all the right way. I really appreciate you saying that. You bet. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the board and to the media, um, this uh, Friday, May 1st, is our uh, is our target date to go live for the advertisement for a job that I've thoroughly uh, been honored to hold for the last uh, 13 plus years. And uh, the closing date on that advertisement is planned to be 1 July. The instructions can be found on our website, opening page of the website, under CEO search. And uh, on May 1st. On May 1st. Uh, and I appreciate the press uh, handling this, uh, AV Press and uh, uh, a couple of their local papers, National Search will be conducted, but that begins this Friday. If you have any questions, just don't hesitate to send us a good time. Um, the trip to Sweden, uh, I told the board and you, you knew that I had been invited uh, by the ambassador's office in, in uh, Sweden, which Within the ambassador's office, there are many federal U.S. agencies that are typically represented offshore. In the, in the Nordic states, we have an officer for commercial development of U.S. products, and they have sponsored this along with uh, members of the current administration and the Swedish Space Agency to host an innovation week. And they brought in representatives from uh, the U.S. Space Agency, a bunch of astronauts, many of which you would recognize right here and around Mojave, uh, cosmonauts, uh, Malaysian astronauts, uh, Italian, Swedish, the Swedish astronaut, and they held a whole week-long event up and down 
the country of Sweden, where they were promoting innovation in a country that has the highest education per capita on the earth, and 20 years ago boasted the most innovative product production in the world on earth, but today doesn't produce an automobile, uh, and all of their shop floor has by and large been outsourced. And so the new prime minister, in, in working with the ambassador, was encouraging a, a week of innovative thinking for the future and how they can re-energize. And one of the product lines which was showcased was commercial space because we've worked with the Sweden over the last few years. So I was really thrilled to be there. The great response a number of times. I met with the prime minister, members of his staff, held a workshop one day. Anyway, a whole series of events. And I think some of you saw pictures, and I have a packet of that if anybody's interested. Did, uh, anybody from the royal family attend? <coughs> no, I didn't see anybody from the royal family, but I had in the past on one of the trips. Uh, this was primarily uh, Ambassador uh, Spaceport Sweden, the Swedish uh, Space Board and Corporation. Uh, uh, education foundations within the country. Uh, and those those were the primary sponsors and the uh, and the prime minister. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wastewater and they found some metals in the wastewater. They've done a subsequent sampling uh, in the last two weeks and it was completely clean. And so, uh, working with the B Koi at the Mojave Utility District, uh, we he delivered the letter to us in person, so it didn't come U.S. mail. We have responded by formally with receipt of the letter and uh, turned it over to Dave Russell and Karen Northcutt, our environmental engineer, and I've given her a budget of $5,000 to give me an initial report on an action plan. Uh, I think there'll be a number of recommendations coming out of this based on a, a daily series of discussions with B and, and us and his staff. And uh, so I just want to give you a, a preliminary heads up that we're in a fairly detailed discussion with the Mojave Utility District on not only clean water in, but wastewater out, and some process changes that we may do, primarily because we're still a growing business. And um, as I've told everybody, uh, there's a lot of people that would like to have problems like this. Uh, the fact is, we're dealing with it because our business base has <coughs> grown so much in the last 10 years. Second, uh, I approved uh, the expenditure of 12000 $332.04, and I know this is within my spending authority, and the check, I believe, is in your packet for signature, and I wanted to just call it out. This is for certification of the PAPI lights on runway 422. The PAPI lights have been installed and in, I don't know, Kevin, year? Year and a half. Year and a half. And uh, as Director Evans will get a smile out of this. Some things take a little more time than it does us to engineer it, <coughs> install it, get it ready to go, and we have had covers over the Pappy lights on one of our runways, and it happens to be at the end of our only instrument approach. And this year we had two airplanes in my 13 years that actually flew to minimums on an actual instrument approach, and when they broke out, we had our Pappies covered up because the FAA said we had to cover them up until they're certified. Well, by God, we finally got on the schedule to get a flight check on our pappies. So 13 years from now, somebody can fly the instrument. <laughs> Approach again. And, and our, <coughs> well, you know what? It, you got to be persistent in this business. And it's not, it's not the FAA. It's just a, it's just a huge system. But uh, once again, we're going to declare victory, and uh, the flight check will be in here to do flight check on the pappy lights on 422. And if uh, Dave can get a bulb replaced on runway 8, may get him to do a pass on runway 8. Because with the latest row of turbines, we elevated the, the Pappy on runway 8, I believe. It's to 3.75 degrees or 4 degrees. I should know that answer. I know we tried both. I can't remember where it settled. But it gives us the proper clearance plane over the height of the nearest turbine, which is uh, 3,200 feet from the end of the runway. Uh, anyway, good stuff, as Elliot would say. It's all data-driven stuff. But I'm happy to report we're finally going to get flight checked on that. Happy Any questions for me? Well, uh, not a question, but a statement. Back during the 50s and Marines were here, they actually had a GCA unit training in Mojave. Yeah. 
on those clear days. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's, it, we don't have IMC days out here very often, but we had one this year. And there were two airplanes on their way to Bishop to haul on the freight that ended up putting in here because they didn't have, they couldn't get clearance back into the base and it got nasty for a few minutes out here. Anyway, they're on the ground a couple hours. Anyway, that's it. All right, I just like to, again, we had our plane crazy Saturday, the same time as you had the fly in. It was an unbelievable success as usual. Everybody worked together very well, it was fantastic. And we're looking forward to many. And the airport, you know, Kevin, they were, these guys. Oh, and we got two free lunches. Uh, <laughs> Karina was trying to help out Stoken, so she bought a couple of sandwiches and uh, brought them over to us. And they were very, as Stoken stuff always is very good. So we appreciate that. And uh, it was just another fantastic day in Mojave. And you know, I'll tell you, I keep saying the best part of that plane crazy Saturday is all some of the old <coughs> F blank, 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 that used to build the right stuff airplanes who come to these things every time and sit and tell their stories. It's, uh, it's, and, and a new generation of those people, uh, like Kelly and all you guys, are, are doing the same thing. And so 30 years from now, you can come and tell your stories. Thank you.